Hello everyone and welcome to this session in which we will discuss intangible assets. Intangible assets are non-physical assets that we cannot touch or see with our own eyes, but at the same time, they provide a long-term benefit for the company and oftentimes they might provide a competitive advantage that must be the most important asset for some companies. They include patent, copyright, licenses, franchises, trademark, we'll discuss all of them. These assets are recorded initially at cost, just like property, plant, and equipment, just like intangible asset. And we have two types of intangible assets. Assets with limited life, they have a defined useful life, like five years, seven years, eight years, and we will amortize them. Amortization is similar to depreciation, similar to depletion, basically allocating the cost. That's for limited life assets. For unlimited life assets, they don't have a limited life. So since they don't have a limited life, they have an unlimited life. So can we amortize them? The answer is no, just like land. To amortize something, to depreciate something, to deplete something, you have to have a useful life. For intangible assets with unlimited life, we test them for impairment on an annual basis. Beyond the scope of this course, I just want to let you know that we don't amortize them because amortization is cost allocation over a specific period of time. So in this session, we will define few intangible assets. We would learn about amortization. We'll walk through few examples, including journal entries, how to buy an asset, how to amortize it. At the end, we'll work a multiple choice question to reinforce this concept. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Starting with patents. Patents are intangible assets. But what is a patent? A patent is a secret formula or a know-how that gives the owner the exclusive right to manufacture, sell, or use a process for up to 20 years. Now, if you watch Shark Tank, they always ask the business owners if they have a patent for their idea, for their business, for their process. Why? Because the patent itself gives you protection, protection from competition, protection from potential competitors. And that, that by itself is worth something. Now, a patent is an intangible asset. It's a right you cannot see, you cannot touch, but it's granted to you by the law. The cost of acquiring a patent is recorded as an asset. So if you happen to purchase the patent, because there's two ways to get a patent. You can purchase or you can invent yourself. When you purchase the patent, guess what? Just like any other asset, as we talked about intangibles, you record it at its cost. If you invented a patent, well, any research and development cost you incur is expensed. But that's a more advanced topic. But if you buy it, it's, it's recorded at cost. If the patent is defended successfully in court. So what happens sometimes is this. You start a process and someone says, well, you stole my patent. This is why you are selling your product. Well, you have to defend yourself in the court. What happened to those expenditure? You have to spend money. It all depends if you were successful. In other words, if you prove that the patent is yours, legal costs are added to the patent. So the legal costs are assets. If you were not successful, those legal costs are expense and you have other problems as well. However, research and development costs leading to patent are expense as incurred. This is when you invent the patent. When you invent the patent, you cannot record those expenditure. They are expensed. Suppose a company purchase a patent for $25,000 with a useful life of 10 years. You debit the patent, which is an asset, you credit cash. 
then you have to record something we call the amortization. Amortization is the equivalent of depreciation, is the equivalent of depletion, which is what? Which is a cost allocation. Now you need to take this cost, 25000 and expense it. How do you expense it? Using the straight line method. 25000 divide that by 10 years. Each year you will expense 2500 and you credit either the patent itself or create an accumulated amortization patent to amortize this patent over a 10-year period. So that's an example of an intangible. Another example of intangibles is our copyrights. A copyrights provide the owner with exclusive right to publish and sell creative work for life uh, for life plus 70 years. Simply put, your work is protected. The cost of copyrights is amortized over its useful life, which is usually shorter than its legal life. The useful life is shorter than the legal life because the legal life is the life of the creator plus 70 years. So, for, so say for example, a company buys a $10,000, uh, a copyright for $10,000 with an estimated useful life of five years. Same accounting. First, we acquire the asset at cost, debit copyright, credit cash. Then we amortize it over a five-year period, which will give us, if it's a $10,000, over five years will give us $2,000 per year. Now, what we, are, what we are saying here, what we are implying is the patent and the copyright, they have a limited life. That's why we can amortize them over their limited life. You could also buy franchises, you can buy licenses, franchises and licenses are the right granted to sell a product or service under a specific condition. For example, you can buy a McDonald franchise. It gives you the right to open a McDonald's store and operate under their umbrella. This is what a franchise is. You have to pay a fee and when you pay a fee, that fee is an asset. It's called a franchise, then you amortize it. So the cost of these rights is recorded as an intangible asset and amortize over the useful life of the agreement unless the agreement is indefinite. Hold on a second. Could we have an agreement that's indefinite? Yes. Sometime you might buy a license or you might buy a franchise name and that's it. Once you purchase it, the seller gives you unlimited life. Basically, you can have it forever. Under those circumstances, we say the intangible will have an indefinite life. If we have an indefinite life, so listen to me carefully, and that's why I kept emphasizing at the beginning, we have a definite life and indefinite life intangible. You don't amortize. This is the same concept as land. If you remember with land, we said don't, we said land, don't depreciate. Why we don't depreciate land? Because land will have an indefinite life. So certain intangible assets gives you rights perpetually. When that exists, then you don't amortize this intangible asset. Now let's take a look at this interesting intangible called goodwill. Now it's not giving to charity. Goodwill for business is something totally different. Goodwill happens, arises when a company purchases another company for more than the fair value of its net identifiable asset. Now, what is net asset? Net asset is assets minus liabilities equal to net asset, which is the same thing as equity. So when you want to buy a company, you will take a look at their assets you will take a look at their liabilities and you value them at fair value. So you look at their assets, let's assume they have an asset of $100, fair market value, liabilities of 30, we say their net asset equal to $70. So this is fair value of net identifiable assets, assets that you can identify. The first thing I wanna tell you about Goodwill, it's not amortized. Well, if it's not amortized, what do we do with it? It's tested for something we call impairment annually. What's impairment? It's beyond the scope of this course. If you want to learn about impairment, go to my intermediate accounting and advanced accounting. But simply put, we determine whether if we paid extra is worth it. Now, so goodwill is arises, it's created when one company is by another company. How? 
let's give let me give you an example let's assume a company purchases another business for half a million so they pay half a million dollar for that business the fair value of the net asset of the acquired company is 450 then we looked at that business we looked at their assets we deducted their liabilities all at fair value and what we find out they are worth 400 fair market value of net asset is 450,000 hold on a second you are paying half a million for a company's net asset fair value of net asset is 450 well you're paying extra you're paying extra above their net asset of 50,000 now why did you pay extra well it could be that you are desperate it could be that you really like the company uh, uh, well well the company um, it's really gives you additional value it could be that management of that company is very good it could be that they have connection to the government there is some reason that you cannot identify simply put you cannot look at the balance sheet and and identify it remember it's net identifiable so there's something in this company that's worth more but you cannot you cannot really you cannot really identify so what do you do you record this extra 50,000 so you cannot identify it as goodwill so what you do is you when you buy this company and don't worry this is beyond the scope of this course this is advanced accounting but i want to give you a taste of it so you know what goodwill is so when you buy the company you debit their assets the various assets that you bought 450 assets minus liabilities you credit cash you paid cash of half a million and the difference is goodwill because you cannot identify it therefore the difference is goodwill and what do you do with that difference you test it on an annual basis for for impairment for impairment what does that mean beyond the scope of this course basically you see if it lost value let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com company a acquired company b for eight hundred thousand dollar the fair value of company b net identifiable asset is 720 how much goodwill should be recorded on company's a balance sheet so they purchase all their assets they purchase all their liabilities at fair value the difference between assets and liabilities is 720 therefore they debited all the assets minus their liabilities at a net out 720 they paid cash 800,000 for this company what does that mean it means there's a debit to an asset that they paid for but we cannot identify since we cannot identify we call good will 80,000 therefore goodwill is 80,000 as I mentioned this topic is covered much much more in your intermediate a little bit more in the intermediate but much much more in consolidation because the concept of consolidation and accounting which is advanced accounting is consolidating two companies it means one company buy bought another company what do you want to do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice true false additional lectures that's going to help you whether you are a CPA candidate financial accounting student CMA invest in yourself invest in your career good luck and stay safe